I'm so sorry I forgot to turn on the recording, but I am doing it now. Um, so what I'll do is um, I will, so that I can also look at the chat, I'll read the questions from here. Perfect. Um, so one, uh, and you talked a little bit about wearing multiple hats. Mm -hmm. So the first question I have is what does ideal work-life balance look like for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's always the, the question, right? Um, so one of the things that I really want to impress upon all of you today is, is something that I've learned for myself, and it's simply changing the word that we're using when we're talking about this particular topic. So I want to invite you to just actually take the word balance completely out of your vocabulary. And instead, we're going to use the word integration, or I'll talk to you about how I feel that I've achieved um, not all of the time, but some of the time, more harmonious integration in my life. So my struggle with the word balance is that I feel like it, it kind of puts us in this box, right? Like it automatically, when we say the word balance, our brain formulates this construct of like, we've got to have everything on an even scale. And if you don't have everything on that even scale, then you're not successfully achieving balance. And I think that that's something that's really unrealistic in our lives, especially for like, I, especially for women because we do have so many expectations of children and career and family and, and friend and all of these different things that we do on a daily basis. So I want to invite you to just take the word balance completely out of your vocabulary and, and allow yourself to release that, that you're not going to achieve this perfect side-by-side -side scale of balance at any given time. So instead, for me, um, what my ideal looks like is more integration. And when I say that, it means looking at what are all of the things that I prioritize in my life? What's important to me? My job, the businesses that I run, um, is it it speaking engagements? Is it my children? Is it my relationship with my partner right now? It's looking at all of those things that are important to me. It's looking at all of the different things that fill my cup that make me feel fulfilled on any given day. And then it's just figuring out how do those different pieces fit together, right? So that I can have all of them integrated in my life, because they all make me feel fulfilled. They're all things that I want to have as part of my life. But you're not going to have them perfectly balanced all of the time. Sometimes work is going to be a bigger piece of the puzzle. Sometimes family is going to be a bigger piece of the puzzle. And you're just working to try and figure out how do these pieces fit together um, as each one of those priorities might shift on any given day. So the ideal for me is almost like this constant moving target, right? It's learning to just recognize for today, what the priorities need to be, and then focusing on those. And then the ideal goal over time is that one, one piece of that puzzle doesn't overshadow the others as the constant priority, right? So if I'm trying to fit family and kids and relationships and friendships and work and all of these things together, then I want to make sure that one piece of that puzzle doesn't become my primary focus all of the time. Alluded to one of the myths that we have about balance that we have to always be in harmony all the time. Are mm -hmm. there any other myths that people buy into when it comes to the concept of work-life balance? Of course, integration is the better word, but when they think work-life balance, what are they? giving into. Yeah, so that that balance one is a big myth, right? Like that we have to achieve this harmonious, like everything is equal, which is just like I said, it's completely unrealistic. There's no way for me to just say, I crushed it at work today. I did an amazing job. Um, and also I was the best mother that I could be. And also all the laundry is folded and all the dishes are done and all these things. And like, it's just, it's impossible. There's only so many hours of the day and there's only so much for you to give. So I think another, another couple of really important myths to break down is this myth that we have to be good at everything all of the time. Um, so you just really have to get comfortable with 
today I'm not going to be the best mom possible because I have 14 hours worth of work that I need to get through and I have deadlines and I have phone calls and today that has to be my focus and that has to be my priority or vice versa. There's a lot of days where my children have to be my first priority because we have whatever is going on in our family um, or the classic like maybe I thought work was going to be the priority today but one of the kids got sick and so now here we are. Um, but that myth that you have to be good at everything all of the time to be successful overall as a whole, let's just let that one go. When you can be okay with the fact that like some days I'm going to be really great at one thing and I'm not going to be great at the others. And some days it's work. Some days it's being a mom. Some days it's being a partner. Some days it's just being me. Like maybe the only thing that I felt really successful at today was that like I got in a a, an amazing yoga class and like everything else might be burning down around me but I got in yoga and I feel good and really just learning to say you know what for today that's enough that was the thing that I was good at today and I don't necessarily have to force myself into this box of like well I wasn't good at this and I wasn't good at that so I didn't achieve success today you know that's not that's not something that is ever going to make us feel like we are achieving and you want to make sure that you want to honor always the things that you are achieving so if your one great thing from today was that you showed up for yoga class with everything else going on then that's your one great thing for today and that's okay good to know thank you and let me check in now very quickly is there anyone from the audience that wants to ask a question either in chat or coming off mute Um, definitely uh, keep me posted if you want to come off at any time. Um, what are some of the early signs that our life is getting a little bit unintegrated? And is there something we can do at that point to step back and take stock? Or where we need to go. <laughs> yes. And I like I will tell you candidly that these are things that I have to do all of the time. So of course I'm here sharing from my experience and the things that I've figured out, but this is still something that I have to check in with on a daily basis. I have to look, you know, in the mirror every day and really choose powerfully for myself what are my my life priorities today. So um, and I think the answer to this question plays into the other myth that I wanted to bust too, and that myth that um, we can do it all on our own, that we don't need to ask for help from others. So I can tell you, you know, just personally for myself, and if you're like me, I had this period of my life where I was a single mom for a long time, and I really developed this strong sense of like, I am the only person that's responsible for all of these things. I'm the person responsible for my child. I'm the person responsible for me. I'm the person responsible for providing. And that can get really, really overwhelming. Um, and I remember um, at one point, my a good friend of mine we were just having a conversation back and forth and she had also been a single mom for a long time and i kind of looked at her as we were sharing stories and i just said you know how did you do all of this like it just feels really overwhelming sometimes and she looked at me and she said christine you really just need to learn to let other people help you and she said if somebody offers you something you just have to say thank you you don't have to say anything else besides Thank you. But that's really hard for a lot of us. It's hard for us to ask for help and it's hard for us to receive help. So to answer your question, I think that that is an early warning sign that maybe we're kind of on track towards the danger zone when we're not willing to just say thank you simply when somebody's offering us a helping hand or offering to help or offering just to gift us something that makes some of us uncomfortable just receiving things from other people. So if you've reached the point where you're not willing to ask for help or people are offering it and you're not allowing other people to support you and pour into you, that can definitely be an early warning sign that you know, we're not, you're not integrating everything. We're not meant to do all of these things on our own. Um, and whether or not that is a, a career aspect of your life or a relationship or a family aspect of your life, it doesn't matter. You're not meant to do any of those things on your own. And you're not any less successful because you allowed people to help you along the way. 
And then to further answer that question too, I think you just, you have to really check in with yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, and if it fits you spiritually every single day. So kind of checking in on those three areas, like, am I taking care of my body? Am I taking care of my mental health? Am I taking care of my emotional and my spiritual health? If those areas, you know, fit you, because I know for me that if I've started Um, skipping meditation or skipping the gym or, you know, we're on our third day in a row of ordering takeout for dinner. All of those things that are things that seem seemingly harmless by themselves, they seem small. But if I do that for too many days in a row, I I know that I'm not going to feel good. So now I'm not showing up with my my highest energy or my most focus or my most, you know, present frame of mind or even with the most patience sometimes. Um, and that can affect all the different areas of my life. So um, you really have to be careful about, uh, I hate to use like the cliche, like self care piece, but you do have to be really careful about checking in, like, how am I feeling? And what do I need? And that can be very difficult for a lot of us to prioritize ourselves first. But truly, if you're not going to do that step, first, you're going to start to recognize some of these warning signs of like, I'm very overtired. I can't focus. I'm very short in conversation with people. I'm frustrated with everyone. I feel very stressed out. I'm having a hard time sleeping. You're going to start to feel the side effects of not making sure that you're taking care of yourself first. I, Mar- I was looking at yes. Yes. I was looking at Maria's comment. Maria and I are uh, two peas in a pod. I've had a hard time just saying thank you, and I have a hard time accepting help. It is hard, and because I think again, Chrissy said the same thing. I think again, like from a societal standpoint, we're almost like we glorify these successful people's stories, right? Like we glorify where they're at and what they've been able to achieve, but you don't always understand or know the real story of what happened behind that for somebody to get to where they are. And we don't take the time to say, here's the, you know, thousand people that helped me along the way. This person babysat for me for free, or, you know, this person did this, or, you know, somebody gave me some advice. Like we don't necessarily hear all of the things that went into someone's success story. Um, And so really just practicing simply saying thank you will help you to habitually, you know, get into the habit of then going the step further of saying, hey, can you support me with this and not having feelings of like anxiety or failure come up for you when that happens. I remember my grandfather and then my dad would say self-help is the best help. Yes. Um, somewhere along the line, I early in my career, I used to do that. It's like, oh, if I want to get it done, I'm going to just jump in and do it. And you're right. I think ultimately I was probably being just this middle person and affecting other people who wanted to grow and maybe not being my best because I wasn't taking the help. But I'm going to do that the next time someone offers. Thank you. Just so, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I love it. So, uh, and then let's see. Uh, any questions from the audience, please? Uh, and thank you, Maria, Chrissy. Please, Christy, please share your experiences with us as well. Um, and I think you did allude to this. What are some of the questions we should ask ourselves to create? an integrated self. So I'll skip Mm -hmm. that one. Um, This one, and you've talked a little bit about this, but what would you say are some of the biggest barriers that prevent us from really reaching out to others to get the help or to integrate ourselves? And how do we address those? Yeah, so I can speak like from my personal experience. Um, You know, I was kind of raised in what I would call like to be like a more traditional household. You know, my dad was the breadwinner and my mom kind of stayed home with us. And like, I grew up with this mindset of like, um, you know, I want to break out of the traditional role and I want to be this strong, powerful, successful woman. And I don't necessarily want, you know, to be stuck with these societal constraints. And, and those are all great things. Um, But the side effect of that was also that sort of piece in my brain that said, in order for me to achieve that, I have to do it on my own. 
which is completely not true. You know, so a lot of the barriers that we set up for ourselves, I think are barriers or things up here, right? That we think that in order to achieve something, it means that there's only one path to get there. And that's not the case. So our inability to be open and to be flexible and to allow others to pour into us along the way, um, that can be a huge barrier if we're not able and willing to let that happen. So that for me personally, that was a big wall that I had to bring down that I can achieve these things, but I don't have to necessarily do it, you know, just, just this way. Um, I also think that like there's just a, there's a lot of cultural barriers too. like our culture is very fast paced now. Um, we live in a world where, you know, like looking a certain way and, um, you know, having certain things achieved is like our definition of success instead of us looking inward and saying, like, what does success mean to me? you know, we sort of glorify this celebrity ideal of like wealth and and a certain physical physique and doing all of these things and like an Instagram influencer. And those things are all great if they're actually important to you and they actually fill up your cup, like, and you feel like you're, you're you know, a whole complete person from those things. But if you don't, um, why are we following them? And I think it's like that societal pr pressure of like, this is our definition of success instead of us taking the time to say, what is my definition of success? Because your definition of success could be that maybe you're just working 15 hours a week on your Etsy business, you know, selling soap that you're making from your house because you're a full-time stay-at-home mom. And the fact that you're able to spend 15 hours a week selling soap on Etsy is your definition of success while you're staying home and you're taking care of your children. And I don't want anybody to ever be looking at things that are going on outside of them and say, because I'm not that, I'm not successful. Or because I'm not this, I'm not achieving the right level of balance. It's, you know, that don't let that barrier of outside influence stop you from checking in with yourself to really just say like what is important to me here um, what is my definition of harmonious integration look like what is my definition of success look like um, and that's that's a very difficult thing to do all of us are influenced and I think that sometimes the even bigger influences can be the people that are closest to us and so those can be barriers sometimes to it, you know, the people closest to us not having the same priorities that we have or not understanding what our personal priorities are. And we allow those influences to make us believe certain things. And now you're back up in the barrier up here of like what your brain is telling you versus listening to what your heart is telling you. Um, and then anyone want to share the experiences, drop a note in chat. Are there any barriers that you are facing or that you're mm. resonating with? Um, and, you know, it's interesting you said that, Chrissy, because I come from a family like that where my mother and women especially, mm -hmm. that's what they did. And so I tried to go in the opposite direction of I'm going to prove, you know, women can do it. Right. And they can be independent and they can do all of that. And, uh, and you're right. I think it's okay. To say, you know what, I can't do it all, but I can still be strong. So. Yes, absolutely. I think it takes more strength to say, I can't do it all by myself, right? And mm -hmm. I'm not good at everything all of the time. Um, I am not the world's best, like, cook or cleaner person. I wish that I was a fantastic cook all of the time, but I'm not. And so like, I just, I have to ask for help with those things. And I have to be willing to, to delegate those tasks to other people. Um, also, that's part of my harmonious, you know, integration of all the pieces into my life is that I get zero, I, you know, I love love people. I wish I was one of those people that got like so much joy out of being in the kitchen. I'm not. I don't like it. I don't want to fold laundry. I don't want to cook and I don't want to clean my house. And so like I have more harmonious integration if I can allow somebody else to do those things for me um, because it gives me more time to do the things that that really fill my cup. 
huge fan of Shark Tank, but I was reading from, I think it was Mark Cuban, who said, you work harder than anybody and you're, you're supposed to work 24 hours. And maybe they did, you know, growing up. But you're right, that may not be for everybody. Mm-hmm. I know I don't want to give up 21 hours of my life nope. on something that's not the same. So. Oh, uh, you're muted again hearing echoes so if you are hearing an echo bear with me um and then um you gave us some uh tips on the questions to ask ourselves but do you have any tools or apps that you use that you found very helpful sure i mean to be honest with you um this is a this is like a catch-22 right because I live and die by my calendar. I live and die by my schedule. Um, and I've done, I'll give you guys a bunch of different tips and tricks that I've used and you know throughout the years that have been helpful to me um, because I do live and die by my schedule and my calendar and I'm very disciplined with it, but it also means that like I have to have this little jammy jam with me all of the time. And there's also some blessing in being able to put that down and walking away from it sometimes as well. So you kind of have to find your harmonious integration with that also. Um, but in t- I'm, I'm very disciplined with being aware of where is my time going every single day. And if I want to, like, I will tell you, I'm still a paper planner person because I want to be detached from my phone and because I want to be detached from my computer and my electronics sometimes. So some things that I've used in the past that have been very helpful for me um, is I will actually take the time to color block my calendar. And so what that means is I'll take out my paper planner. I have it right next to me here. I'll take out my paper planner and I will do out my whole schedule for the week. And I don't just mean work, I mean everything. So when do the kids need to be dropped off at school? When am I working out? Who has doctor's appointments? When am I cooking dinner? What are we having that day for dinner? When am I going to the grocery store? You know, when does the dog need to go to the vet? When am I doing X for work? You know, so like if this is my time block for work, what am I doing during that time block? Am I answering emails? Am I working on a project? When am I taking a break for lunch? When am I going for I will put everything in there. When is date night? You know, when is date night going to be on the calendar? And then I will color code everything. So this can be a really, really eye opening um, process that you can go through to color code your calendar. And what I would do is I would take different color highlighters and I would have like one color for family time and I would have one color for work time and I would have one color for like health time, which was like, when am I going to the gym or doing whatever? Um, And then date night might be its own color, things like that. So then when you step back from that picture after you've color coded everything, it's not just a whole bunch of list of things to do that it's going to overwhelm you right like I could see those blocks of color so now that's I mean I say black and white but it's a a color map of where your time is going and so that was a really clear visual for me if I was spending too much time in one area of my life right like if there was a predominantly one color on that week's schedule, either something needed to get moved or some priorities needed to be shifted for the following week. So if I had too much of a work color on there, I needed to move something around. Or if I had too many just like random doctor's appointments, like things like that, then maybe I can shift one of them out a couple weeks to create some more time for me to be productive. Um, But then I could also clearly see, have I scheduled myself my time every single day? Have I scheduled myself? For me personally, I love working out. That's what makes me feel good. That's like my grounding. For somebody else, it might be meditation. It might be walking the dog. It's it, whatever it is for you. But that was my color coded, clear indicator. Have I scheduled time for myself every single day so that I am grounded in all of the other things that I'm doing? And you know, am I actually scheduling time to spend with my partner? Which I know some people like scheduling it doesn't feel spontaneous and romantic. But the problem is, is that when we have so many different things going on, those are the easy things to slip through the cracks, right? If it's not in the schedule and I'm telling you that I live and die by my schedule, then it's not going to happen. So I need to be intentional about making sure that there's a color block in there for all of the things. And it's, it's hard to skip something when you can see it right in front of your face. There's too much here and there's not enough over here. 
So um, really getting very, very good with your time management and disciplined with your time management and then setting those boundaries. So you have to train other people what those boundaries are and that they need to respect them. So if you're done work at five o'clock or you're done work at six o'clock because you've decided from in our house, like from six to 8 p.m. is family time. We sit down and we have dinner together as a family and we put the kids to get to bed together. So I'm very protective of that time. That was not always the case. I will tell you that we have been through quite some turmoil in my household to get to the space where we just said, hey, this is the block of time every day that we're going to be protective of. And so that's blocked off on my calendar, including on my work calendar, so that my coworkers also know I'm not going to respond to you during this time period. I don't care what it is that you need. That is protected family time. That's the time I'm spending with my children. And so you can't touch it. And that's that has been because I have trained it over a period of time that this is this is just how I function. You're all going to be fine for a two hour block. But if you don't do that, if you don't teach other people what your boundaries are, they will inevitably just I mean, we're all just walking around trying to get what we want. Right. And it's not really in a selfish way. It's more in just like a not paying attention kind of way. So if you're not clear about what your boundaries are, then other people don't know what your boundaries are. Yes, I, I love that. Um, I a planner this year for the very yes. first time in my life, and I love it. It's this big book, which granted my cat shoot both the sides. Uh -huh. I love the color coding concept. I haven't tried that. And I'm going to try that because you're right. If it predominates in one area, so for example, if personal time is this little spot in the corner, then we know something's got to give. Um, right. And Christy is definitely resonating. Um, I need to do that, schedule the protected family time and time with my partner. I love yeah. it. Yes. You're right, because otherwise the personal time slips away without you realizing, mm -hmm. hey, this is my time. Um, and that actually brings me to a very good question. So at work and you know speaking of boundaries because i've unfortunately worked sometimes where bosses have felt fairly free to call me after six and five and what advice do you have on handling situations at work where there's multiple priorities and you're always you know you might feel like oh god my promotion rides on this or something rides on this is there something we can do to delicately bring that balance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's always easier if you set those boundaries up at the beginning but this is what happens for most of us, right? We start a new job or we get into a new environment or we start working with new, a new client and we just want to make them happy. I think as women in particular, like where um, most of us, like this is actually not something that I'm super great at, but most of us have like a natural inclination of caretaker. So we want everybody to be happy and everybody to feel well taken care of all of the time which our clients probably love us for because we're over giving to them all of the time. But in reality, that can really erode you, right? That's one of those warning signs where like we've allowed too much of giving to others to erode the time that we need to protect for ourselves. So um, it always works better if you can set the boundaries at the beginning. But what happens for most of us in these new situations is we just come in, we're excited, we're passionate, we're ready to go. And we're just like, yes, yes, I'll do that. I can do that. Let me take care of that for you. I want you to be happy. I want you to be comfortable. So I'm just going to give you everything that you're asking for. And we forget the magic of this beautiful little two letter word. And that's no. <laughs> no. Um, and I think there's a lot of polite ways that you can say no without just being like, nope, not doing it. You know, I'm certainly not telling people to do that. Like, obviously, in career and business land, um, you know, there's all these other aspects in terms of like your promotion and your performance and, you know, what your expectations and responsibilities are. So a couple of things, um, if you especially if you've been in a position for a long time, um, and you're now in this environment where you feel like, yeah, I probably should have done a better job of setting some boundaries up, but I didn't. And now I'm stuck in this situation where I have to address it and I feel uncomfortable addressing it. Um, ask for what the expectations of you are, you know, so 
I, I always, when I have to have a difficult conversation, I always default to like asking the other person questions because I want to make sure that I have a clear understanding of where they're coming from before I just assume that I know. So I would ask, I would say, hey, boss, um, you know, can we just sit down and have a quick chat? I want to make sure you know, that I'm meeting your expectations. But it occurs to me that maybe I don't have a very clear picture of what your expectations of me are. You know, so what do you expect of me, you know, roles and responsibilities wise? What do you expect of me in terms of time that I'm devoting to the job? You know, what, and ask those questions and make sure that you actually have a clear ex a picture of those expectations before you make any assumptions. You might be surprised by the answer. And then that might give you an opportunity. So, you know, your boss says, well, you know, I expect you to be available between nine and five and to do these responsibilities and I to do that and say, okay, um, you know, can I just ask, like, I've noticed a lot of, you know, emails or text messages or sometimes phone calls that kind of fall outside of what would be considered normal business hours. Can I ask you, do you expect me to answer those outside of normal business hours? Or is it acceptable for me to just, you know, let your call go to voicemail? You know, I understand maybe you're just trying to relay something to me that before you forget or before you close out for the end of the day, is it okay for me to leave that in my inbox or leave that in my voicemail until tomorrow morning? Um, and, you know, the answer is probably, I would say nine times out of 10, it's probably, yeah, of course, I don't expect you. People say this all the time. I don't expect you to answer me after hours. And so like our natural inclination is like, well, then don't send the message. But I'm also the person that sends the message too, because sometimes I am working later. I do have a final thought and I just don't want to forget about something. So truly, I don't expect the person to respond to me, but I'm trying to make sure that I'm crossing things off of my list. And so I know I'm not going to get a response or I don't expect a response tomorrow till tomorrow morning, but I don't relay that to them. I don't say, hey, you know, Susan, I don't expect you to respond to me until tomorrow, but I just needed to cross this off my to-do list. We just fire off the message. So really have that conversation about what do you expect of me? And you can also ask too, you can, you can set the boundary and you can say, listen, you know, it occurs to me that like for me personally to be successful and really productive every day, it's very important for me to have like my work hours and then like my myself time or my family time or whatever that is for you and say, um, is it okay? Like, is it okay that I don't respond to these outside of normal business hours things until the next day? And if you really need something to me, are you from me? Are you okay with communicating that clearly to me? Like, Hey, Karen, I really need you to answer this tonight. And then I know, okay, it's an urgent thing. But if I don't see that little indicator that this is an emergency, I'm telling you right now that my response to it is I'm not going to address it until I'm back to work the next day. So there's a couple of different things that you can, you can do in there. But just try and go into all of those delicate conversations with asking questions first to make sure that you're understanding and not assuming. And oftentimes when you ask questions, questions of people, you sort of lead them in the direction on their own instead of you having to sit there and have like that uncomfortable conversation of like, okay, now I'm telling you how it's going to be because, you know, that doesn't feel good. And especially when you're like, but I still want my bonus. <laughs> Let's tie back to what you were saying earlier that if I don't set those boundaries, mm -hmm. nobody's you know, going to set them for yeah. you. So uh, that's great. I mean, right now I don't have the situation in my current role, but very recently I ran into that and I suppose in my future I'll run into it again. So great mm -hmm. advice. I love it. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, any questions from the audience? Anytime you want to come off, uh, I just want to remind you that I have to enable you. So just let me know. Um, let's see. Um, just let me... So when we start to prioritize ourselves first in life, what are some challenges that we run into and that we can prep for? <laughs> oh, that is such a great, great question um, because 
especially if you are not someone who has prioritized yourself in the past, um, people will, especially the people closest to you, will all of a sudden notice your shift in priorities. Um, so uh, you will probably find some pushback from your immediately immediate family members, um, maybe significant other, maybe your children, um, maybe your boss, but most likely the first people that are going to kind of give you some pushback are the people that you spend the most time with because they're the ones that are going to notice first, you know, and they won't, most of the time they can't even articulate it to you, like especially my kids when I'm kind of like, mommy time, like I need some space, like they don't really know how to articulate, but like, wait, like what's going on here? Like I'm not the center of attention right now. Um, so you're, you'll definitely get some pushback. And one of the things that comes up a lot is of course our sense of guilt, right? Like that as soon as we get some pushback on our boundaries, what do we do? We're like, oh, well, you know, I feel bad now. Or, um, my daughter's so good at it. She'd be like, mom, I just want a hug. And I'm like, no hugs. You have five more minutes until hug time. Like I will hug you. But like right now is like mommy meditation time. And I need to have quiet meditation time so that I can hug you and like hug you from my heart. Um, but like that feeling applies to everything, right? Like it applies to us in our career too. So like, if your boss is constantly like pushing against the, um, you know, and if you're in a place where like you're setting these boundaries and you're having these conversations and you're really trying to like set this up so that everybody can be successful and you're being honest, like, hey, like I want to be a productive member of the team and people aren't respecting that because I've been in situations where it doesn't matter how many boundaries you set, it doesn't matter how many conversations you have, you're just working with someone who's not going to respect it no matter what. And that can be a difficult place to be. Um, you know, and my best advice there is that you just have to really look inward and figure out, you know, what's the the best thing for for you um you know personally I haven't been happy in those situations in like 10 out of 10 times I end up leaving because I just can't be in an environment where I don't feel like I'm supported to thrive so um but that I, I would tell you to try to communicate the shift that is coming in advance if you can so if you're listening to some of this and it's resonating with you and you're like, ooh, like I need to implement this and I need to, you know, I need to start implementing more me time or I need to implement date night or I need to go have a conversation with my boss and explain to them like I need to have different priorities and things of that nature. Um, if you're if that some of that is resonating for you and you need to to start implementing these things, have a conversation with the person that it's going to impact the most first and say, hey, partner, listen, um, I really need to have more boundaries around this. Like I need to have more self-care time. So uh, Tuesday and Wednesday morning, can you be responsible for getting the kids to school because I need to go whatever, do yoga or walk the dogs or lay in bed for an extra hour, whatever it is. Um, so ask the other person to be supportive and you kind of shifting those priorities. The same thing with that conversation with the boss that we just had too. If you've been in a position for a long time and now all of a sudden you're like, oh, like I really need to shift this and I really need to shift that. Just go talk to them about it. Be like, I don't want my productivity to slide. I don't want your view of my performance to be any different. but I am feeling like I need to shift my priorities. Can you help me to shift them in a way that I feel like I'm getting what I need, but also it doesn't impact like how you're viewing me showing up in this particular scenario. So you will absolutely get pushback, but the best way to try and avoid like running into walls with people, is have the conversation with them ahead of time about, you know, how you're feeling and why you're implementing these things so that they can support you in that and not feel like you're just like, I'm done with this. I'm not here anymore. Switch. Yes. <laughs> people get a little antsy with the turning off of the switches. They uh, yeah, they absolutely do. And um, this brings me to an interesting question. Um, we sometimes, you know, it might not be us, or at least we may know people 
close to us, friends, family, mm -hmm. that are perhaps not accomplishing that integration because they mm -hmm. have a hard time saying no. Is there a way to help them navigate that journey without seeming like I'm offering unnecessary advice? Mm -hmm. um, but you know, they come to you because they're stressed out. And um, so how do we navigate something like that? to achieve VR integration? Mm, that's a, that's a <laughs> good a <tricky> question. <laughs> <laughs> and these are close friends, obviously, or close people, mm -hmm. but you see that they're giving so much of themselves to others that you can see that it's having an impact on them. Mm -hmm. That's always been a head scratcher for me, like how do I approach that? <laughs> Yeah, that's a really, really great question. I mean, I've definitely run into that. And I imagine that I've also probably been the person on the other side for some of my friends and family, too, where they're just like, oh, how do I tell her like too much? Um, my partner is really great at that. Like he has no problem being like too much, like you're whatever is happening right now, like you need to reprioritize that he's very good at it. Um, I had to learn to be very good at like receiving that and not being defensive about it. Um, that's hard with people that are close to you. And I think my best answer is to, to go back to that asking questions thing. So a couple things here that I want to make sure that you know, I convey from my experiences. Um, one, make sure you're coming from a place of love, right? You know, so you kind of have to check yourself and just say, like, am I just bestowing information upon this person to bestow information on them? Or am I coming from a place of love, like that I really want to help them with this? Or are they just annoying me because they won't shut up about this thing that's stressing them out? And so now I just want to shove advice down their throat so they stop talking. Um, you always will you always will be heard differently if you're coming from a place of like, I really want to help with this, you know, and I have an experience that I went through that I would love to share with you that I feel like it, it, it might help in this scenario. Um, you also have to be very careful with your boundaries and understand that not everyone's going to be willing to receive what you have to share with them. Not everybody is going to be willing to integrate the things that you're suggesting that they integrate. And that can feel really frustrating for us, especially if we are coming from a place of love. Like I feel like I'm pulling my hair out sometimes and I'm like, why don't you just see what's best for you? Um, but ultimately at the end of the day, all we can do is kind of like, share that with love. And if somebody doesn't receive it, that's not our responsibility. And I, I call it, we just have to bless and release, right? Like, so I wish you well, but like, if you're not going to do anything about this for yourself, then I wish you well, that's all I can do. Um, because it's really not our responsibility if somebody doesn't want to take it to the, to the next step of like actually, you know, integrating some things that would be helpful. But when you're actually having a conversation, uh, I would default back to the asking questions again. I find that very often if you can ask like from a, an interested place that you will get a more positive response than if we're trying to tell. Um, because, you know, we're all independent, strong people, and we think we have it all figured out most of the time. And so I know for me, like it's very difficult to tell me anything. You have to help me arrive at my own conclusion if you see that I'm struggling with something. So ask questions. So if I'm if I'm your friend that, you know, I just can't stop complaining to you about this really stressful work situation and I, it's just huh, like it's impossible to solve and you're kind of starting to see some things that I don't see, just ask questions. Christine, have you had this conversation with this person that you're having a difficult time with? Or have you asked them this question? Have you asked them to share their perspective with you on this? Have you considered? Have you thought about, you know, or just, you know, or can you tell me a little bit more about like what's happening for you? You know, how are you feeling when this happens? And see if you can get a little bit more to like root cause with things. And sometimes people will just lead themselves to their own conclusion. Or again, same conversation with the boss, right? It might just provide you with enough of an opening to say, do you mind if I share with you what I did when I was experiencing something similar? I think it might help you. And ask, ask for permission to share, you know, your experience instead of feeling like you're just jumping in and being like, Hey, Maria. Hey, Christy. Like, how about you just try this? Um, 
if you can kind of ask, like, tell me, you know, a little bit more about why is this stressing you out? Like, what what's the underlying cause of this? What why, What's the underlying cause of what you're struggling with? And why are you having a difficult time? And, and get a little bit more to the emotion, then you might have an easier time leading them to, do you mind if I share with you something that I think might help? We have a couple more questions, but before I do, I want to check in again with the audience. We would love to hear from you. Come off mute. Come off your camera if you wish. You guys are all quiet. I hope you're in the draw. <laughs> it's very engaging, beautiful. Um, I'm just looking at the DMs. I don't see any. I'll give them one more minute if they want to say. And then, now, uh, Christine, before we go to um let us know if um how we can you know follow you on linkedin or social media um feel free to drop that in the chat and then yeah. um, and all, then the, all the social medias um i'm on facebook i'm on linkedin i'm on instagram so i'll drop those um i'm a terrible multitasker believe it or not um i try to while I do many things all day long, I try to be present with one at a time. So I'll drop those in there in just a couple minutes, some links for you guys. But yeah, please, by all means, feel free to follow me on the social media. You can see the chaos that is my life the best if you follow me on Instagram. Um, and I completely agree with Maria, really enjoying the conversation and giving us lots of advice that I feel I should apply to my life. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. We have a couple more questions. And one has to do with but especially now, a lot of people are interviewing and re-examining where they want to go. Mm -hmm. um, and in order, and you know, but and I see a lot of advice about, oh, you know, ask the interviewer this, ask the interviewer that. But I, you know, I always get the sense that recruiters and people who want to hire you are giving you, you know, they want you in there for a reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are there some tips and tricks on how we can get a sense of how does this company? respect work-life balance not just what we read in the news but what's actually happening on the ground yeah that's an awesome question so i would really encourage you to actually come up with like a specific scenario so you know those interview questions that you always get where they're like tell me how you handled a difficult situation or tell me how you, you know, handled a disagreement with a coworker or something like that. Um, I like to flip it around and ask specific scenario questions. So if you ask in an interview, you know, what is your company's work-life balance culture? How does your company support work-life balance? You know, they'll be like, well, you know, we got bagels on Friday and we really encourage people not to work more than, you know, 40 hours, but really we do. And like, you know, we really encourage and um, those aren't the answers that you're looking for, you know, so actually ask a specific scenario, um, especially when my kids were smaller, the question would be, how are you going to handle it when I call you and tell you last minute that I'm my kid is sick? And we had a day full of meetings that was really important for me to attend. And I have to be home with my daughter. What's your response? And how does your company handle situations like that? Is there a support team in place to take to, you know, to help me with the fact that like, I might not be able to reschedule all of these meetings today. And it was important for me to be there. But now I can't. And sorry, my kid is the priority. You know, so ask specific scenario questions like that. Um, you can ask the question like, does your company um, believe in or allow for um, phone calls or direct messages or things to happen outside of work hours? Or are there specific boundaries around people not being able to contact me when I've logged off for the day? So asking like those really pointed scenario questions, you'll get a much better response than just asking someone to tell me about what their company's work-life balance culture is like. Nice, thank you. Um, and today you gave us so many tips. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Right. Um, and as people are walking out that door, so do you have uh, some things that we can start as early as today to get us on the right track to finding that integration point? So if there were about two or three top ones that you think we can start with, as soon as this call ends, what would those be? Yeah, so they're yeah. super, super simple. Um, one, I want you to all leave here just really understanding that 
you do not need to be good at everything all day, every day. Okay, you have not become a failure or lost your success because your children ate takeout for the third night in a row because you're busy at work. And you have not become a, fa a failure or lost your success because you've got 150 unread emails in your inbox because you decided to go to your son's t-ball game tonight instead of answering them, okay? It is not an all or nothing scenario. The emails will be there tomorrow or tomorrow night you cook instead of ordering pizza. But like, it just, you do not need to carry around this belief system that you have to be good at all of these things all day, every day. And you do not need to carry around the belief system that you need to do it all on your own, that it's okay to say thank you when you receive things from people and that it's okay to ask for help when you're really struggling to not be able to, you know, accomplish all of your goals without having people to pour into you. Um, that and like, I really just want you to leave with confidence that you already are so capable exactly the way that you are. You're capable, you're powerful, you're strong, you're successful exactly today how you are because of all of the things that you've already achieved. So maybe you're not where you want to be with certain goals that doesn't take away from all of the work that you've already done. And so don't, don't allow you know, the feeling of like, well, I'm not doing this right. And I'm not doing that right. And I now need to go set all of these boundaries and, and, and things like that. No, the fact that you're, you're even here and you're trying to incorporate all of these things into your life in a successful way, you're already successful. You're already leaps and bounds ahead of someone who can't even tell you like what the most meaningful priorities in their life are. much i know we came up on top of the hour but i will check in audience any question for her today i'll give them a minute before we wrap sure thank you all for being here today i hope that it was empowering it is uh it uh, it's chock full of advice so thank you and i already know i'm going to be implementing a lot of those oh good so, yay uh, yes it was very very uh it was a very informative hour so i'm I'm so excited and thank you for joining us. Of course, we really loved having, having you. Um, and then, as a reminder, the recording will go out. Uh, if you do have, you know, any issues, you can write to the Power to Fly platform. Or if you find me, I'm Lakshmi Valuri. I'm on LinkedIn, so feel free to drop me a message. Um, you'll find me on LinkedIn with that last name and first name. Mm -hmm. and, you know, drop me a message if for some reason you didn't see the recording or cannot play it. And then Christine, I'll check back in a few days and make sure. And if there's an issue, I can talk to my marketing manager, make sure it's on YouTube. Great. So thank you very, very much. We loved having you here and we look forward to more conversations with you. And uh, good afternoon, everybody, and enjoy your weekend. I know it's yes. only Thursday, but enjoy your weekend. We're close um, enough. Have yes, a good one, everyone. Thank Thanks, you so everyone. Much. Bye. It was wonderful. Thank you.